Hello and welcome to the very first episode of NRL Rewind. I am Phil Whitehead and we'll be having a look today at the Round 19 action in the NRL competition, which got underway on Friday night when the Brisbane Broncos hosted the struggling Gold Coast Titans. It was a comfortable 30-10 to 10 win to the Broncos. Um, the Titans have had a rough season as far as injury goes and their best player to date, Ashley Harrison, has further compounded this by suffering a serious elbow injury that looks like it will keep him on the sidelines for a, a few weeks. It was a good win by the Broncos and they're certainly moving in the right direction heading toward the finals. The second game on Friday night was played over in New Zealand where the Warriors hosted the Bulldogs and this game was exactly what Warriors fans would have been looking for from their team. The Bulldogs had all the incentive in the world to play well with new coach uh, Jim Dimmick taking the reins for the first time. The Bulldogs came out of the gates with a lot of energy and enthusiasm, but the Warriors, after taking a little bit of time to find their feet, ended up powering away to a very convincing 36-12 victory in freezing conditions. Saturday night definitely generated the bulk of controversy in Round 19, with two out of the three matches decided in Golden Point Extra Time. The first of these was in the Ron Coot Cup match between the Sydney Roosters and South Sydney Rabbitohs won 21 points to 20 by South Sydney after a Chris Sando field goal near halfway. Uh, this match also contained what I thought was the funniest moment of the round. Uh, watching a prop forward attempt a field goal is always good value and Jason Riles, well, points for effort, not many points on the scoreboard. The second golden point match for the night was in the Battle of the West between the hosts, the Penrith Panthers and the Parramatta Eels. This was a game that Parramatta never should have lost, and although doing so 23 points to 22, uh, I'm going to come back and talk about this game in more detail later on, but it was Nathan Hindmarsh's 300th game for the Parramatta Eels. A lot of neutral NRL fans, I feel like they would have liked to have seen Parramatta get the win um, for Nathan Hindmarsh. He's one of the, the, the great workhorses of the current competition. But it wasn't to be Luke Walsh kicking the field goal in extra time after uh, Luke Burt, who was responsible in many ways for the game going to extra time, was unable to win the game for Parramatta. In what must have been a relieving result for West Tigers fans, uh, the Tigers bounced back to the winner's circle with a 38-18 victory over a John Thurston less Queensland, North Queensland Cowboys. Uh, this is a typical Jekyll and Hyde season for the West Tigers. Uh, they can be brilliant as they can be absolutely awful. And thankfully, as I said, for long-suffering Tigers fans, and particularly for coach Tim Sheens, this was a night where they turned it on. And uh, although there were some bright spots for North Queensland, in particular the form of fullback Matthew Bowen, uh, the Tigers got away with a comfortable 20-point win. The remaining matches of round 19 pretty much went the way that the experts predicted and by some pretty solid margins. Uh, Melbourne did as they pleased at a lot, for a lot of the game against the Canberra Raiders who showed some signs of, of good effort in defence but really offered nothing in attack. Uh, Melbourne winning that game 26 to nil. Uh, in Newcastle, Manly came away with a 32 points to 10 victory set up by a dominant first half and a 22 points to nil lead. Uh, the game in the second half, the intensity really dropped. A lot of mistakes from both sides, and Newcastle, as they were in round three against Manly, had some really hard times uh, with injury and had a lot of players playing out of position by the end of the game. But it was a good, solid first half performance from Manly, and there's some good signs for their fans as they continue to charge toward a premiership tilt. Uh, and finally, on Monday night, the, the round was completed with a dominant performance from the St George Illawarra Dragons, the defending premiers, over a Cronulla Sharks side that had really shown some improved form in recent weeks. However, that was um, never considered to be stacking up that well for this particular match, and 38 points to 8 was a fair reflection of how dominant the Dragons were, particularly down their left side in attack, and that's really going to be uh, where they'll be pinning their hopes as they uh, continue along their title defence this year. So with these results in the book, the thing that's become clearest to me is that the gap between the top sides and the bottom sides is probably as large as it's been in, I'd say, the last three to five seasons. Uh, at the moment, I see only three genuine title threats, that being the Melbourne Storm, the current competition leaders, 
the St. George Illawarra Dragons, the defending premiers, and the Manly Sea Eagles, who have been uh, a surprise in the eyes of many, uh, certainly not a surprise to, to Sea Eagles fans, but I think um, they are genuinely a well-rounded side that will have a lot to say in, in terms of who wins the premiership this season. A lot's been said about the Brisbane Broncos, especially with their incentive to send Darren Lockyer out a winner before he retires. I'm going to stick my neck out and say that Brisbane this year cannot win the competition. They seem to lack that X factor that you see in the other three sides that I mentioned. They're a very solid team and I, I certainly predict that they'll be there in the major semi-finals. I think they may even make it to the grand final, but they fall into the category of teams like the Cowboys and the Warriors. As good a side as they are, I can't see them being able to play a level of football high enough to beat those top three sides twice, which is what you'll need to do to be able to win the Premiership. With that being said about the top half of the competition, or the top half of the top eight, what of the rest of the league? Well, there's been a number of big disappointments this season, and you'd look squarely at teams like the Bulldogs. Of course, the Roosters have been the big underachievers. But what of teams like uh, the Rabbitohs? Now, they've, been, they've had a couple of seasons where they've promised a lot in the preseason and have had their fortunes basically taken out of their own hands uh, by injury. But at the moment, you look at the top eight and the teams that, are, that can still possibly have a say in the top eight. I don't think that anyone outside of the top six at the moment will pose any threat whatsoever. At the moment, the seventh and eighth positions are largely irrelevant. Uh, I'd be looking at teams like the Raiders in particular to have much stronger seasons next year. And I think those of us who have been waiting for what has almost become the inevitable late season rush for the Canberra Raiders have to take a step back and say it's just not going to happen this year. If it does come, they'll have left it too late and they've been uh, really, really disappointing and their fans have every right to be very frustrated with the performance of the team so far this season, but there's nothing wrong with their roster and they should be the big improvers next year. Now, I said I was going to come back and talk a little bit more about the Penrith-Parramatta game, uh, without a doubt the most controversial game of Round 19. And I'm hearing, I've been hearing a lot of uh, feedback in regards to blaming the referee for the outcome of that match. Uh, look, I can understand Parramatta fans where the frustration's coming from. However, Luke Burt had a perfect opportunity with five seconds left in that match to kick the ball as far into the stand as he possibly could. It takes time to reset and the siren would have gone while the ball was dead Game over, Parramatta win that game, 22 points to 16. It was a human error on Luke Burt's part. What it did was that it opened up the opportunity for the referee to make the decision that he made, right or wrong. And he's already come out and say, said that in his view, Parramatta were time-wasting, which is why he called time off. I'm not saying that I personally agree with that decision, but ultimately the outcome of that match was in Luke Burt's hands and he made the wrong decision. I feel very sorry for the guy also that he had the opportunity to win it and his shot at field goal hit the post. I feel sorry for Nathan Hindmarsh, as a lot of fans do, that he didn't get a win in his 300th match. But I think on this occasion, the criticism of the referee is misplaced. Penrith, to their, uh, to their credit, Penrith never gave up. And you've just got to remember that in this sort of competition, uh, the game is never won until that siren goes. And it's never been better illustrated than it was on Saturday night. Well, I think that'll just about do it for uh, episode number one. Thanks everyone for, for tuning in. And uh, look, I'm very much looking forward to, to next week. I think the game of the round, no doubt, will be on Friday night, Melbourne hosting Brisbane. And uh, I'll be very willing to, uh, to eat a good dose of humble pie if Brisbane get up in that one. I will be tipping Melbourne. I'll say that right now. And I think that all the buzz around Brisbane could quite uh, dramatically come crashing down to earth after that match. But we'll have to wait and see. So that's the end for this week. I'm Phil Whitehead. This has been NRL Rewind. I'll see you next week for round 20.